welcome to the course on modern digital communication techniques. So, till now we have discussed source coding and uh, we have seen how the signals which could be analog could be converted to digital sequence and once we have the digital sequence then we can do different kinds of encoding scheme and one of the objectives would be to reduce the number of bits that could be used to represent the source. So, now uh, you can carry on further and uh, discuss uh, many more details of source coding. There is a huge amount of literature available on source coding both on analog as well as digital and there are different characteristics based uh, source coding schemes uh, which we will not cover in this particular course because of the time constraint and because we have to also cover other things. Our main interest was to show you or to make you aware of the uh, things associated with source coding uh, so that you can understand it is important with respect to communication system design. So, here onwards uh, any further advanced things uh, you should be able to follow based on whatever platform we have created in this particular course in the previous lectures. So, now uh, if we now is the time that we have to get into uh, design of communication systems. So, we, uh, we are still preparing for seeing a complete communication system and uh, at this point we would like to ask the question that uh, what so, we are basically trying to communicate so when we would like to write down this word that we would like to communicate then the question that we would like to raise is is what you would communicate right is the basic question. So, given our previous uh, understanding uh, we can take a typical example like let us take an analogy instead of directly getting into the details of communication theory. Uh, if we think uh, communication is like sending of information that is what we have discussed before. So, we can compare similar to a uh, transport system which transports things from one place to another right. So, if we take a few example of uh, things that gets transported. So, we want to transport things to be transported from one end to another end. So, we have to design a transportation system. So, that is like pure uh, hard hardware things and pure uh, big bulk things, uh, but it is somewhat analogous to communication. So, let us see what it is and how does it uh, sound a bell towards uh, the design of communication systems or the basic questions that one should ask. So, when we are transporting things let us say you could ask what things so, question could be what are the things right that you should generally ask because accordingly your solution is going to de depend on that. So, suppose uh, we are saying that uh, we want to transport uh, logs of woods that could be one situation. Uh, we could say that we want to transport people that could be another situation. Uh, we say that we want to transport uh, let us say fruits then someone could say that uh, we could transport uh, let us say some things made of steel right this is a few different things and then you say so what if you are asking this question. So, the next important question that uh, we should ask towards designing a solution is that uh, this particular thing which you have identified which could be varied uh, transport across what let us say we are we are talking about people. So, to be transported across a particular we would ask the geography right. If we say geography we could say that it is transported over land and then we are seeking the solution. We said well you can go for cars ok. The next question could be well if you are transporting people how many people. So, your answer could be many people it is still land your solution could be a bus right. Then uh, we could move and say that well uh, we now want to transport things uh, over land. So, we could think of a truck right, we could think of a goods train right and then we could think of things which are perishable right and over large distance. Then we could think of airplanes right, we could think of logs of wood and then we find that there is a river which is connecting to lands where between which it should flow 
we could say that let them simply float. Right? Now, if we look at this, there are certain hidden things that we are discussing behind this 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 uh, scenario that we have taken at all that may appear not uh, directly connected to communications but there are certain insights which we can draw from this certain insights like we are trying to characterize the things based on these descriptions and we have seen that if we think of uh, transported across a particular geography we are trying to characterize the link or we are basically characterizing this as the channel right so and here is the source, right? What is to be transported? The solutions would depend upon an understanding of the source or what is to be transmitted and or what is to be communicated or transported and over which it has to be communicated, right? So, with this, we are trying to draw an analogy that you are seeing that these solutions are customized, or in some cases, you could also use the word optimized to these situations. right? So, for instance, when we talk about this perishable goods, this particular case over long distance, we are saying that we need to transfer things not people. So, that hints that uh, well you do not need seats. So, you could stack them up and uh, when you say perishable, you mean to say that there is a time constraint. So, there is a delay. And if you look at these solutions, these solutions they involve a significant amount of time when they will transport across large distance. So, you think of a different solution. You could say that why this solution was not used over here. The answer is very, very simple that if I am going to use airplanes for transporting people across shorter distances, it would be very costly affair. And in some cases, let us say where the distance is 50 kilometers or 100 kilometers it might turn out that it is in fact worse than using a car. So, what I am trying to hint at is that you need to understand what is to be sent right? and you also need to understand over what things need to be sent. So, these are the two important things that uh, we need to understand before we think of solutions. So, when you think of solutions, uh, then comes the design of these things and as well as design of the whole system. So, when we say this not only the bus, the bus communication system is also involved in this. So, we will slowly delve into that. So, now if we are uh, asking a question related to communications, right. So, if you are asking the questions relating to communication, uh, again I would like to ask what is to be communicated, similar thing, what is to be communicated, communicate what? Right? So, well you can say information uh, that is a pretty right answer, but then how do we say that well, uh, what do you mean by information? That is a important question and uh, then we would have to go back to how things were handled uh, years back. So, earlier or, or let us say we take a direct example and we say that suppose uh, I am seeing a light source, a light and I say I want to convey the information about this particular source. So, let us say it, it has a particular color once that information is sent, it is sent forever. right? Now, how important is it to send information regarding this light source? The answer could be that this is important if there is change of content in that source. For example, I could say that the, the light or the source that we are seeing from far changes between two colors, let us say red and green. right? So, then it could make sense to send across to the other side that what is the color of the source. right? So, what I am trying to hint at and what we discussed earlier is that if there is a chance or there is a probability that we are measuring something. So, that means of course, we are, there is a measurable right? that means you can measure it uh, by some mechanism and 
uh, there is a probability associated or a chance of change. If this is available, then there makes sense to communicate, right. And generally, we can say that there are signals which have this these kind of properties. So, they are measurable and uh, they do change and there is a chance of changing. So, if it does not change with time, then there is hardly a point in sending some information about it. So, over a very, very large amount of time, the amount of information you send is negligibly small. This is something that uh, we should be uh, thinking in, in, in that particular direction. And uh, when we think in this direction, we, are, we, we say that well, we have certain signals, right, which are not constant and we have to send this across. So, we have got part of the initial answer that what we have to send. So, basically the things that we are going to be talking about is going to send information in the form of signals, right. So, then as we did here, our basic question would be that we have to characterize these signals, right. So, without characterizing the signal, we would not be able to send it across a particular geography or a particular channel. That means, whether there is a delay constraint, whether do, do they have a particular structure like with people, I mean definitely you need the, the carrier to have seats, right. Uh, whether if it is like things, uh, they could be stacked up in boxes, right. And then you could ask for how many such boxes could fit in or how many such chairs could be arranged, uh, so that so many people could be transported, right. So, the questions or the solutions would depend on characterization of this. So, what we are trying to say is that we need to characterize signals, right. And now, if we think of this as the, the uh, system or the channel, so, we need to characterize signals and I would say channels. Generally, this is referred to as systems. The reason is uh, we put something input into this and we get something out of this, right. Uh, we send a certain signal into the channel, we get a certain signal out. We send people into this system and it produces people at a different place, right. We put things into it after a certain time, they get delivered and there could be certain changes to it. So, when we uh, think of communication system, we need to characterize signals and we need to characterize systems, so that we can design a communication system. Without being able to characterize it well, an, a proper solution is not feasible for these things. So, when we look at uh, or when we ask the particular question of uh, characterizing signals and systems, uh, we could ask the question that how could you uh, characterize, how would you characterize signals, let us say and there could be systems as well, right. So, uh, there are different ways of doing it and you could say that well, when I look into a signal, I could say that I could characterize the signals based on whether they are deterministic or versus whether they are random, right. We will slowly get into see uh, what do you mean by random. We have of course, seen something. So, for random we can say that you cannot predict a priori what will be the outcome in the next trial, right or what will be the value of the random variable in the next instant of time if it is a stochastic process or in the next uh, experimental event. So, it could be deterministic. Deterministics are the ones which are completely uh, described by certain expressions given an initial condition. So, if you are given an initial condition and uh, you have the relationships to exactly determine what is going to happen at a certain duration of time. So, these are deterministic. You can characterize signals based on these things. So, that is one way of doing it. You could say that well, I could like to characterize signals as being continuous versus discrete, right. We had seen examples of continuous and we had seen discrete, right. It takes discrete values. 
you could say I could characterize signals based on band pass versus low pass and this is what we are going to see very soon. You could say I would like to characterize based on whether their energy signals finite energy versus whether there is finite power and so on and so forth. You could you could go on characterizing them. Now, so what if you if you characterize these how does it help us in uh, designing communication systems. So, well what we are going to do is uh, we would like to represent the signals within a certain framework or within a certain structure. So, that we can use that particular structure uh, in uh, finding out the interaction the signals have with systems. So, that we can calculate the output when the signals get launched into the signal into the system. And uh, when we get the output then we can see what kind of difference the signal has from the original form and our job would be to reconstruct the signal back to its original form. So, based on this uh, we would like to analyze uh, these, these particular uh, signals that we are going to encounter in our uh, day to day communication experience. So, before we uh, move on to describe uh, the actual communication system we would like to uh, just state a few specific signals which are very important and which may appear at certain points uh, during the analysis of our communication system. So, one is the continuous time step function. There could be uh, various definitions, but uh, this is the definition that we will follow by which will be defined as u of t is equal to 1 for t greater than 0 and equals to 0 for t which is greater than equal to 0 and it is discontinuous at 0. So, that means you do not know what is the value. So, at, at 0 it is 0 just at greater than 0 it is 1. So, this is the unit step function if this is 0 and this is the time axis. Right? Okay. And uh, then there is another important function which is the delta function. So, if you have the delta function, uh, delta function is defined in terms of the unit step function as the integral of minus infinity to t u of sorry uh, we would define delta function in, in a way that u of t is equal to minus infinity to t delta tau d tau. Now, how do we get this to, to look at this uh, I would like you to recall the relationship of the discrete time functions which are much easier to visualize. So, if this is the unit step function the delta function would be a difference of the unit step function drawn over here and the unit step function drawn in this line. So, that the difference would result in this delta function right and you could represent the delta of n is equal to u of n minus u of n minus 1 or you could say that u of n is equal to delta n plus delta u of n minus 1 which you could write as u n delta n. So, basically I could write delta n plus u of n minus 1 which is equal to delta n again the re recursive definition delta n minus 1 plus u of n minus 2 and so on which you could define in a recursive manner u of n is equal to summation of m equals to minus infinity to n delta n. So, this gives a hint towards this kind of relationship and you would also have delta t is equal to the derivative of u of t right. So, these are some important relationships uh, which we would just like to revise and if we see that how you could uh, get to this uh, you can make an approximation of u of t. So, we would rather draw it here. So, you can think of an approximation of u of t by this function 
which is T and this value is 1, let us say there is some continuity over a period delta and then it takes this value. right? So, if you take the derivative of this particular function from 0 to delta, there is a constant slope and that slope is basically 1 upon delta, this is 1 upon delta. So, this value you are going to get 1 upon delta and the rest of it is 0. right? So, you are going to get this constant slope of 1 upon delta. So, if you take the area of this with lim limit delta tends to 0, you are going to get a value of 1, 1 upon delta multiplied by delta. So, that means the area has been restricted to 1 and uh, we could say that, so at, at this point we could write d d t of u delta t evaluated at uh, t between 0 to t equals to delta, what you are going to get is 1 upon delta in this in this whole period. And we are basically approximating this is what we are writing as u delta of t. So, in other words we have written that u of t is equal to limit delta tends to 0 u delta of t. And we also know that this area is equal to 1 irrespective of the value of delta. And then we could write delta t as the derivative of u delta t and this we could write the suffix delta and then we could say delta t is the limit capital delta goes to 0 delta sub capital delta t. That means, we are going to make delta equals to 0, this becomes narrow and narrow and narrow. So, this becomes very very narrow and the height becomes very high. And uh, this is delta delta t, so basically delta right. So, as delta becomes small, this becomes higher but the total area still remains the same value of 1. right? This way uh, you could find the relationship uh, between delta t and u t as well. right? So, at this point we move forward and uh, before we proceed with a few more expressions, uh, I would like to say that there is another important thing which uh, we should consider. It is like when we are analyzing systems uh, as we have said that we have the channel you have seen in this picture that signals would go into the channel and they would come out and this is what we have uh, described before as well. So, when you have such a system which is going to be impinged by signals and you are going to get an output then the question arises that how do you study such systems and uh, so that you can get an easy or a meaningful representation. So, generally uh, these systems are studied in terms of their eigenfunctions, right. Uh, generally exponentials are a set of eigenfunctions for systems and uh, the advantage of doing so is that uh, if you launch an exponential into the system, uh, what you are likely to get uh, of a system whose eigenfunctions are exponential is again another exponential with some coefficient and the coefficient would be the eigenvalue. So, what we are trying to say is that uh, you have you are launching an exponential into the system you are getting an exponential out and what has changed is the coefficient of this particular exponential. So, so that means your study could be restricted to the coefficients of this exponential rather than the exponential itself. So, with that motivation uh, we would like to uh, deal with uh, the Fourier analysis because uh, when you do Fourier analysis you are dealing with the, uh, the representation of signals or systems in terms of exponentials and their coefficients. So, through that we are going to study such systems. So, let us uh, revisit or use the definitions x of t through the Fourier relationships is equal to 1 upon 2 pi minus infinity to infinity x of omega e to the power of j 
omega t d omega where this is the time domain signal, this is the angular frequency domain signal and x omega is the Fourier transform of x of t right? and x of t is the inverse Fourier transform of x omega. Sometimes uh, this is called the synthesis equation and the reverse is called the analysis equation. x of omega is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of t e to the power of minus j omega t dt and in terms of continuous uh, frequency f you could write this as x of t is equal to integral minus infinity to infinity e to the power of j 2 pi f t dt and here also we have x of f is equal to minus infinity to infinity. Uh, here I made a mistake here there should be x of f and here it should be x of t e to the power of minus j 2 pi f t d t uh, x of f yeah same thing over here right. So, with this and of course, the relationship omega equals to 2 pi f. So, with these relationships uh, we should be able to uh, study the communication systems. So, moving ahead further uh, we would like to see that if uh, x of omega uh, is equal to delta of omega minus omega naught because this is another special function. As we said that uh, before we get into the study of communication systems, we will revise or tell you a few of the important functions which will appear again and again. So, that uh, let us uh, have these expressions handy with us which we will be referring to whenever necessary. So, we define the important function delta which you have just described and we would like to see uh, that in, in the frequency domain it is the delta function. So, what is x of t is the question. Right. So, x of t is equal to going by the definition 1 upon 2 pi minus infinity to infinity x of omega. So, we write delta omega minus omega naught e to the power of j omega t d omega and because it is the delta function the job of the delta function is to collapse this entire function at omega 0. So, when you have at omega 0 that is the only value this function can ever take in this whole integral. So, what you are left with is e to the power of j omega 0 t upon 2 pi. So, in other words uh, we could say that if x omega is equal to 2 pi delta omega minus omega naught, then we could say that x of t is equal to e to the power of j omega naught t. Similarly, we could also have if x of f is equal to delta f minus f naught, we have already said that f uh, omega is equal to 2 pi f. So, if this is the case, then we have x of t uh, is equal to e to the power of j 2 pi f naught t or in other words uh, we could say that if this is if the if the x of t is e to the power of j 2 pi f naught t then the Fourier transform of this is delta f minus f naught and at omega naught equals to 0 if I say omega naught is equal to 0 what do we get is x of t is equal to 1 similarly this as well so, as f would imply x of t is equal to 1 and what we have on the other hand is delta omega and what we have over here is delta of f. So, of course, uh, we have this 2 pi associated with this. So, if there is a 1 on this side, we have a 2 pi associated here. right? So, these are some of the important relationships uh, that we will be using in uh, the future uh, setting up of the, the expressions that involve 
signals and as well as systems which we are going to encounter in the future lectures. Thank you.